This is Journeys with Trevor Jang. Okay, these kids were um, actually what they called phantoms in the community. They hadn't been attending um, school for the last couple of years uh, for whatever reasons, you know, and uh, um, they, they were to a certain degree, you know, they, they had some uh, problems within the community, behavior problems, um, you know, issues with, with destruction and uh, negativity. And um, by, by bringing this school to Morristown and, and developing a pride in, in their community again, they've now taken ownership uh, within the community and um, so now they're the protectors of the community which is so cool because they were actually the violators you know previously so yeah they they love it and uh, like the the video says you know all we think about is school you know all we uh, all we want to do is come to school Taking it easy, don't stress so much Living in the right now, you don't always gotta be in such a rush Take a vacation, if that's all So Kane, what do you like about eye uh, Everything. Everything Like what? This butt Our class Eyes, everybody wanna race my car Mama going down, baby, now slow things down Oh, you're gonna wanna turn it all around Before you're gonna wanna do it all again It's living in the moment Don't think about the time All those troubles and the worries They're gonna work out, yeah. they're gonna be fine, yeah But I wanna find my rhythm now But I wanna come and find it Out of a positive environment <laughs> And uh, the academics are easier Now that there's more help and it's hands-on It's making a difference with my life. I'm starting to come to school more. SSS. Um, didn't really go to school there. Just skipped a bunch of times. I can't. I have to go to school every morning. Come on, see what your mama going down, baby. Don't work so hard. Do it for the yard, not for the awards. Before you're going to want to do it all again. Oh. Everything about the whole school I like, and, and the field trips we go on, <laughs> and all that, and just every event we do in the school I like. So what do you like about iCount? Uh, all the teachers and field trips and uh, the work that we do and what else we do? PE, which is the best out of all. <laughs> Just when we thought it might just be, be hey, hey, hey. 
the sky lit up and the sun it rose again yeah, you're alive to live here yeah, I'm a believer I believe in you I'm a believer I believe in what you do I'm a believer I believe in you I'm a believer I believe in what you do you really know what's going on? It's what do you like about I Count? That my life changed. In what way? Good way. Feel positive? Yep. Cool. Like going to school now? Yep. Waking up early. That's all we think about at school. <laughs> Alrighty. I'm a believer. It was really cool. It came, uh, it just sort of flipped onto my uh, computer one day. Somebody mailed it to me and uh, I saw the opportunity and these kids were, uh, they're so talented. They've got the beat, they've got the rhythm, they've got the energy and, uh, and so we thought we'd put that all together and then of course with Dale Cutler's knowledge, tech knowledge and his digital art savvy, you know, we knew we could we could do this, and uh, and so the kids were on side, and they were keen to do it, and uh, and the video just got born, and and um, yeah, it, it's a fabulous video. You saw it. Well, we we had just came across an email that said there was a chance. Um, you just showcase your school um, with a message for Sean Atlio, just sort of showing what you do, where you're from, and what you maybe want in your school, that type of thing, and. We thought, well, this is a really neat opportunity for us to get some exposure, you know, because we're really proud of this program, and so we just got to work on it, and I've done videos in the past before, so we got together with the kids, and we shot some planned video shots, and a lot of the stuff is just shots from things we've done throughout the year, and we just put it together, and I really think, like, what we tried to do with the video was just make you feel like you're at eye count or just sort of immerse you into the feel and when you watch if you see the video coming from a staff standpoint and everyone who's here it really has a eye count vibe to it so you can really see what the program is like when you see the video so and I think that really helped us get Chief Atlio to come in which is really neat. Assembly of First Nations National Chief Sean Atlio made the trip north to visit the students of the Morristown I Count High School. The independent, unique program for at-risk youth entered a national video contest on the importance of education and how the students feel about their school. As finalists, the lucky kids received a warm visit from their national chief. The full day included one-on-one -on -one bonding as well as a community tour and the group eventually made it back to the Morristown Multiplex for an afternoon of sports activities before a celebratory ceremony to end off the evening. Chief Atlio says he hopes to use the iCount video to inspire other First Nation schools across the country. To support, support the youth, to support uh, the students, to support the kids, to recognize them as, as leaders by uh, you know, demonstrating what they're demonstrating which is uh, overcoming unbelievable odds and uh, helping to tell the story of a comeback that our, that our First Nations communities um, are participating in that is, uh, um, is absolutely incredible. And uh, I'm here to thank them for producing the video, for sharing their story with others, because that story can inspire other communities, can inspire other young people. And this is about the leadership that I see young people demonstrating from coast to coast to coast every single day um, when you know a young person chooses, when there's so many other choices, many of them negative, to take a positive uh, uh, direction in life, to get up and go to school, to find a way to struggle to, to succeed in school, and then to find out that it's possible to enjoy it, to enjoy learning about your culture, your language, your heritage, and your history. And so there is a great resurgence, a renaissance, if you will, that's happening, and it's being expressed in art not just the old forms but in new forms it's being expressed in music uh, in sports in in learning in the schools and also to uh, have a sense of dreaming about what's next you know go on to a skills trade become a reporter for the local uh, st station or uh, become a chef become uh, an apprentice and move on to become an electrician 
um, my goodness, you know, perhaps even to become a political uh, leader uh, of some kind, uh, whether it's in uh, chief and council or uh, maybe other forms. But it's the idea of, of having anything that is on that might be on your heart and mind be possible. And for a long time, our people have not uh, felt that sort of encouragement. Uh, school was used as a tool of oppression, of division. Uh, it helped facilitate conflict between our own people. So we're doing lots of work to heal. Uh, the planning for a poll to be raised here um, to commemorate the residential school era, happening while child welfare is being taken over and run by First Nations leadership here in the community, while the school brings innovative ideas, not because the funding's there. In fact, the funding is not there. Uh, Three to $5,000 less per First Nations learner in this country than the average Canadian in the mainstream learning system. Fundamental unfairness. We're challenging Canada at the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal. As we speak, our lawyers are there saying that our child welfare system is un underfunded. We're going to the United Nations next week in New York to tell a story about how there is a grave human rights crisis in Canada right now in 2013, and it impacts communities like Morristown and the over 600 First Nations communities across this country, and now's the time for change, and the young people are leading the way. Dale, Lorna, and the rest of the ICOUNT staff came to Morristown with nothing but an idea and the passion to make it happen. ICOUNT program um, started from a desire of my husband's actually. He taught in the school district for, for 35 years and um, he saw the need, the transition between elementary and high school. There was, there was a void there, especially for the Aboriginal people. And uh, this opportunity became available and so uh, he came on board and we sort of, uh, you know, we started with, with really just a concept, an idea. So for the first couple of months, we actually didn't do many academics whatsoever. We, uh, we actually just bonded with the kids. We, we found out what Morristown was all about. We um, did a lot of great cultural things with the kids and in the community. You know, went huckleberry picking and all these kind of things. And the kids, we all very, very quickly um, became a, a unit, a family, and we all started to really work together. And then we brought in the academics slowly because, you know, school was a, a threat to them. It was a problem for them. And uh, after a while, they really, they really enjoyed learning. And, uh, and it's just sort of really developed from there. We, uh, now in May, you know, the kids were all really excited. We're going on a big trip in June with the kids down to southern BC. They've raised monies. They've, uh, we've started a little uh, services uh, contract business with them. So they'll have some employment opportunities in the summertime to make some money. And uh, they just feel good about themselves now. And uh, they feel good about talking to us. And they've gained a respect, a huge respect for their community and also for themselves and for others. And uh, we just feel really, really blessed that this has happened to us. You know, it's, it's the coolest thing ever. I'm related to some of the kids in the class, so it's, it's just really neat to, to make a connection. I, I've known all these kids before coming in here, but it's just, it's become a real, like in the classroom, it's a real family feel at I count, and it's just really neat just making those connections with the kids, and you know, you, whether it's here at school or out walking around at night, I get to see all these guys and chat with them, so it's just a really, really good connection. Well, one thing that, you know, strikes me when I speak to somebody who's uh, uh, 14, 15, or 16 is that um, it's like looking in the mirror. I come from a village too. I come from a family who's faced our share of struggles. I come from a village who had a hard time creating jobs or economic opportunities. In fact, I come from a village that was told in, in the early 70s, uh, a teacher was told, don't bother going there. Uh, they won't exist in 20 years. They're killing each other off. And uh, that's the story that was being told back in the late 60s and early 70s in a lot of our communities. So when I see these young people and know that now we have uh, Canada officially apologized to my late grandmother to her face in 2008 for residential schools. Now that I know we have the UN Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, which confirms what we've always known, that we have the right to free prior and informed consent over what happens not only on our lands, but in our lives. This means uh, to support and empower young people to know that applies in education. It applies in, in child welfare. It applies in health. It applies across the full spectrum of everything that impacts our lives. So we are now in what I would hope is an era uh, of empowerment of Indigenous peoples. The era of First Nations has arrived. 
And these young people, um, they're more than our future. We need them to succeed now in life. And they're demonstrating the possibilities. They're doing it in ways when they're not even fully supported. The funding is not there uh, for technology in schools. The funding is not there for the languages in schools. And the, the funding is not equitable on par with the rest of Canada. So we still struggle to find and fight for those equities, but we don't wait for them. We encourage and recognize innovative, successful approaches like I count that is happening right here. And we ask that others recognize that support and be inspired. Um, I count actually Morristown now is sort of a bit of a template for other reservations and other communities that are in crisis with, with, with students. And uh, we, we'd like to share this, this idea and this concept. It's, it's out of the box education. Um, we're outdoors um, much more than we are indoors. Um, we, we take a subject, example science, and we spread it. We spread that throughout the day and, um, and, and, and sort of one experiment becomes the science, the English, the socials, the, so all your subjects are combined and uh, the students can work at their own pace. Um, we, we don't really work in grades anymore in this system. We like to sort of think of it as colors and, uh, and just levels. And so when a, when a student can work at their own capacity and there's no outside pressures saying, you know, you're 15 years old and you should be in grade nine, you know, no, you can be wherever you are as long as you're learning and having fun learning. We, uh, we support you. Uh, I think they're getting, in a way, they, they're getting to know themselves because they're getting to see that they can do anything, you know, kind of like a cliche, right? They can do anything they want if they believe in themselves. And a lot of these guys and gals who come in here, you know, they don't believe in themselves, you know, and they, they don't realize their potential. And so... Um, just by showing love and being a real family environment in here, these guys are really just starting to see their, their potential and like, I mean, they're doing things on their own, which is really neat. Like we don't sit there and try to drive ideas in their head or something, but you know, we'll talk about things like, for example, we have, you know, once in a while we'll talk about smoking and, and health and stuff like that, but we don't sit there and drive to the kids, you know, don't smoke, don't do this, don't do that. And we have two or three kids that at the beginning of the year were smokers and they've made a conscious effort on their own to stop smoking and it's something they bring up in class all the time so it's just really neat to see these kids start to take initiative and in changes that they want so that's really cool for us to see that too and um, you know some of the kids too they you know we start to see the the pop and the energy drinks going out of the class because we talk about that type of stuff once in a while so so the kids are really starting to open their eyes to things and starting to think a lot and I just think that's really neat, you know. I don't, I don't think they would get that opportunity anywhere else in the traditional school system. And we just have so much time and energy we can put in into the individual, so it's, it's really neat like that. The sense of responsibility that uh, you immediately get from uh, both the education and leadership, uh, but most importantly the students. And it's time for us as, as First Nations uh, to take charge for, of our own destiny, to take responsibility. Um, and in some respects, yes, let's keep pushing for fairness, for funding. Let's keep pushing for justice and how we relate to the land and the environment around us. We're going to need to do all of those things. In the meantime, we can also just do something about our education success now. We can find ways. Uh, and so we'll be supporting, reaching out uh, to support the, the leadership here to pursue other forms of funding. Because now phil uh, philanthropic leaders, people who provide resources and money to third world countries to build schools, bring drinking water, to support the building of playgrounds, they're now turning their attention to their own backyard in Canada. Canada realizes that it's been, uh, it's been uh, suggested to be a champion of human rights around the world, but there are human rights issues right here in their own backyard. So this is about facilitating a better relationship between First Nations and Canada. So I'm here because of what the young people said, what they said in their story, and what I'm hearing from them directly from their mouths today, and being demonstrated through their actions. They're not telling me that it's easy, and I'm here to support that. It isn't easy, but we don't look for the easy way out when we're trying to, to struggle and, and, and succeed as individuals, whether it's in school or in life, and whether it's between First Nations and the country. There's been tried to find the easy route in the past. There is no easy route here. It's hard work. And that's what these young people are faced with right now. And I'm here to tell them that they're not alone. You've got your local leadership, 
but we're out there as well, and we're going to continue to fight and struggle to support your success. So keep at it every day. In front of her, we get in our own way, is what they say in sports. Gripping the stick too tight, not allowing for our natural abilities to have the opportunity and to be vulnerable for success. <clears throat> to be vulnerable to write a poem and then to say it out loud in front of not only people in a room like this, but possibly hundreds, if it goes viral, maybe millions. That is the courage of being vulnerable, getting out of your own way. So we can have what we say. So, am I going to graduate? Yes. Am I going to graduate? Yes. Am I going to graduate? Yes. you know what is not always expressed even uh, by mainstream leadership and that is the deep love that we've got uh, for each and every one of them that they matter and that by them succeeding and lifting themselves up by extension they're lifting up their entire nation and they're lifting up first nations in this country and so in that respect they're leaders now and they should be proud of that and i know it's not going to be easy but know that uh, you know they they encourage them to uh, rise up to those challenges um, and uh, you know when times get difficult um, as they sometimes will know that it won't last forever that they can make their way through it and that's true in life and I think uh, the young people here offer incredible inspiration so in fact I leave here encouraged and enriched and inspired and it feels just like you know you got so much more energy every single day to get up and fight for the young people in this country. And I want them to know that, that they inspire me. They're awesome kids. They have so much potential. They, they can do anything they want. They can do anything. Um, just want them to know that they're special kids, man. They're awesome, just like anybody. <laughs> a visit from AFN National Chief Sean Atlio put the stamp on a very successful first year for the I-Count School. Lorna and Dale say the future is wide open for both the program and its students. That there is hope. <laughs> that these kids came to us with attitude. They had some real dark demons, I think, inside that they needed to release. And um, they came and with a, a good ear and uh, some good, wholesome, healthy foods and exercise. Um, the program just developed and the kids developed with it. They, they just wanted a home, a really good home as far as an education home goes. And, um, and, and I count delivered that. And uh, so here we are today. It's the minds of the youth we must preserve. Future leaders being led down a path that is obscured. The conditioning is restricting the knowledge we can learn. We lived in the way and gripping the faith that we've assured. I see the conditions on the reserve. You can bet your bottom dollar that the growth will be insured. The children of today are the future of this earth. Oh, young little buffalo wanna run with the herd. There's no limitation to education. Let it prosper. We're all on the same team. Here's the roster. We gotta be surprised. The child dropper hovering on hope like a helicopter. We have to find in the box, we learn in our own way By the canyon on the rocks, we live in the old way With the new day, we burning up the sun under the cool shade With cool shades, got sweet thirst like Kool-Aid I count, you count, we count, we count in our blessings Flying on flourishing with our right and left wing This eagle like a jet stream, this eagle like a jet stream One, two, three, four Drop it to the floor, drop, drop it to the floor I count, yeah, I count On the subject, we keep on being clear. Rocking out like metal rip pants and long hair. We got the power in the hands, building it with a strong pair. We got the presence, the ancestors made it legend. This time we call the teachers. Here's a new lesson. I go where you go, kicking it like you go. We out of this world like you trip to Pluto. Drop it to the floor. I count. 